Think about your favorite Dodge vehicle. Whether it is the Charger, Challenger, or something in between, you can thank John Francis Dodge and Horace Elegant Dodge for starting the Dodge brand and setting the stage for the development of reliable vehicles. Early days of the Dodge Brothers The Dodge family originally hails from Stockport, England. But John Francis Dodge and Horace Elegant Dodge were a pair of brothers born in Niles, Michigan. John was a little more than three years Horace's senior, and the two brothers grew up as an inseparable pair. Their father was the owner of a foundry and machine business, so the boys grew up around machinery and mechanisms and learned how they worked. Despite being from a hard-working family, the Dodge brothers came from a humble background. While Niles from their birthplace, the young boys didn't remain there forever. In 1886, when John was in his early 20th and uh, Horace was in his late teens, the Dodge family packed up their bags and relocated to Detroit, Michigan. Once in Detroit, the brothers experimented with different carriers. They worked at the boiler maker plant from approximately 1886 to 1894. In 1894, they found jobs with the Canadian Topograph Company as machinists. This location was a bit farther, as it was across the Detroit River in uh, Ontario, but uh, the brothers had a solid work ethic that made the effort worthwhile. What did the Dodge brothers make before cars? Cars weren't always the bread and butter of the Dodge brothers. They actually explored the entrepreneurial world by first building bicycles. To understand their entry into the world of bicycle manufacturing, you can first learn about their way of collaborating with one another. The brothers had an effective system that allowed them to create a national partnership. Harris was the creative genius behind their alliance, as he was a habitual uh, tinkerer and a talented mechanic. On the other hand, John was the businessman uh, of the DOO. He had a manager-oriented uh, mindset and was responsible for closing deals for the brothers. Their partnership became uh, evident when Horace created the first ever ball bearing that was dirt-proof in 1897. Shortly thereafter, uh, John communicated with investor Fred. S. Evans and led the first to open the Evans and Dodge Bicycle Company. The Dodge leased space at their former place of employment, the Canadian Topograph Company, for two years so they had somewhere to build their ball bearings and bicycles. In 1900, the Dodge sold the company and used the profits from the sale to open their own Detroit-based uh, machine shop. It was here uh, that they began to focus exclusively on making automobile parts. The Dodge brothers time with the old mother vehicle company and Ford. Once the Dodge opened their own uh, machine shop, they wouldn't work alone for much longer. They managed to secure a contract uh, for the old uh, mother vehicle company to build uh, transmissions. Well, this contract helped them prove uh, their commitment to providing a high level of service and quality to every transmission they manufactured. Their work was uh, so admirable that the Olds uh, Motor Vehicle Company, which was now known as uh, Olds Mobile, offered uh, them a second contract. However, the Dodge declined it in favor to work with Ford Motor Company. The Dodge uh, redesigned their shop so they could focus exclusively on building engines for Ford vehicles. As part of the Dodge's agreement with Ford Motor Company, they also got to become uh, partial owners of the company. From 1903 to 1913, the Dodge continued to work for Ford. They were so successful that they had to build another manufacturing plant in uh, Hantrack, Michigan, so they could keep up with demand. The death of the Dodge brothers uh, marked uh, the end of the era and sent shockwaves through the American auto industry. 
the implications of the Spanish flu pandemic that began its uh, relentless uh, march around the world in 1918, much like COVID-19 today, were far-reaching. While the National Automobile Show in New York City in January 1920, both John and Horace Dodge became sick. There is still some debate over their illness, but at the time, uh, the consensus uh, was that they had been infected with the last wave of the uh, devastating Spanish flu pandemic that killed more than 50 million worldwide. As with many victims of COVID-19, on January 14, uh, mere days after becoming ill, John was afflicted uh, with a phenomena and died in his hotel room at the age of 55, even though he suffered uh, from uh, cirrhosis of the liver. The official cause of death, uh, Harris recovered uh, from influenza and phenomena, uh, but uh, was uh, nearly a bedridden for most of a year in Florida before dying on December 10 at the age of 52. The death of the Dodge uh, brothers uh, marked uh, the end of an era and sent shockwaves through the American auto industry. It also uh, brought an end to plans to revolutionize the industry from manufacturing to sales and marketing. The brothers epitomized the American dream of rising uh, from humble beginnings to vast wealth. Well, they were a rough and tumble, hard-drinking blue-collar men from Niles, Michigan. John Francis was born in 1864, Horace Elegant in 1868. Their grandfathers, a father, and uncles were machinists. Both were mechanically inclined. John was somewhat reserved. Harris developed a reputation for a hair trigger temper. Together, the red-headed Dodge boys were an inseparable team. Uh, the brothers never were able to move beyond their uh, brusque blue-collar ways, even with the acquisition of uh, tremendous wealth. In 1910, the Detroit Times enhanced their reputation as uh, brawlers uh, with the article that detailed a wild barroom fight. John Dodd responded by first a publicity apologizing to the bar owner and then paid for damages. He then uh, threatened to kill the paper's owner. Horace uh, once beat a man unconscious in the street after he made fun of him for being uh, unable to crank his fort. The brothers were known uh, throughout the Detroit era as well as in Chicago and New York City for hard drinking exploits uh, while wearing identically uh, tailored suits and uh, speedboat racing. Even though they were counted among the wealthiest men in America, they were excluded from Detroit high society. So, when the Gross Point uh, Country Club wouldn't admit him, Horace built an enormous mansion on the adjacent property, with a 12-car garage and tasting facility that faced the country club. They also funded the Detroit uh, Symphony and led the effort to build their uh, symphony hall. The brothers began making their mark in Detroit almost as soon as John moved to the city in 1886. The following spring, Harris joined him. The brothers were bright, ambitious, and hardworking. And as soon as John was earning 16.50 million a week as a foreman and Harris 13.50 million, as soon as John was earning 16.5 a week as a foreman and Harris 13.5 as a machinist in a boiler manufacturing company. In 1892, they began working for an equipment manufacturer in uh, Windsor on the Canadian side of the Detroit River. They also developed a ball bearing bicycle, the Evans and Dodge bicycle, in the hope of profitably tapping uh, into the tsunami of interest in the two wheeled transportation phenomena. In 1900, uh, they established their own machine shop in Detroit. They placed an advertisement in the city uh, directory uh, that mirrored their confidence and ambition. We are prepared to do any class of work that can be done in a first-class modern shop. 
they soon established a reputation for quality work and within one year had secured a contract from Ransom E. Olds to supply engines for his uh, fledgling Olds mother works. Uh, the brothers began supplying transmissions for the company six months later. In February 1903, uh, the second major contract was secured. This time, the customer uh, was Henry Ford, who retained their services to manufacture the running gear for his forthcoming Model A. As this was Ford's uh, third uh, attempt to launch an automotive company, and as he had the reputation of being pursued by creditors, uh, the Dodge brothers entered the agreement uh, with concerns that were made uh, manifest a few months later. In June 1903, with Ford owning the brothers more than $7,000, they negotiated an arrangement that would change their lives and the course of the auto industry. They agreed to write off uh, ordeal payments and extend Ford an additional $3,000 in credit, doing six months in exchange for 10% of Ford Motor Company stock. For a decade, the Dodge brothers worked almost exclusively for Ford, and John Dodge accepted a position as vice president of the company. By 1910, the production facilities had become a, a bottleneck, and so they opened a massive, state-of-the-art factory complex in Hamtrak and Enclave surrounded by Detroit. By 1913, the Dodge brothers had 2,500 full-time employees and were the largest supplier of automotive parts and components in the United States. It had been a meteoric rise and the brothers were wealthier than could have been imagined when they moved to Detroit. But as John Dodge once quipped, I'm tired of being carried around in Henry Ford's vest pocket. And so, the brothers initiated an ambitious 18-month plan that included a suspension of their agreement with Ford, additional factory expansion, designing an automobile, and purchasing the machine tools needed for manufacture. Dodge Brothers Motor Car Company, one of 120 automobile manufacturers launched at that year, was established on July 1, 1914. The initial announcement was made in the Saturday Evening Post in August. This was followed by simple advertising and promotion designed to uh, opaquee interest. Dodge Brothers. Then, Dodge Brothers, a reliable, a dependable a sound, were added. There were uh, no illustrations or details. This was followed by carefully selected interviews and press a release a distribution. The Dodge Brothers are the two best uh, machinists in M Michigan. When the Dodge Brothers car comes out, there is no question that it will be the best thing on the market for the money, wrote the Michigan manufacturer and financial record in August. In November, the first Dodge dealership opened in Detroit, and at the debut display of the new Dodge, more than 6,000 people came to see it in just one day. The five-passenger open uh, touring car was an instant success. It had a 35-horsepower four-cylinder engine with a sales price of $785. An Air Ford Model T sold for just $490, but it was uh, rated at only 20 horsepower. And unlike the Ford, the Dodge had uh, as standard equipment an electric starter and lights, a 12 volt electrical system, and a speedometer. The cars uh, were also the first to use an all steel body. Dodge Brothers manufactured everything for their new cars, but the bodies, tires, glass, lights, and batteries. The Dodge Brothers had entered an extremely competitive market. An industry study determined that cars selling for uh, 676 
dollars to 885 dollars accounted for uh 15.5 percent of the market in 1915 and 19.8 uh, percent in 1916. There were 15 manufacturers uh, competing uh, in the narrow price range the dodge brothers were undaunted they exported to nearly 15 countries and targeted a multifaceted commercial market that included uh, aircraft companies communication companies ship lines and taxi franchises the company uh, was launched with 5,000 employees, but grew to more than 7,000 with, uh, within a few months. Uh, by mid-1919, there were 17,000 men and women working for Dodge Brothers in Hamtramck. Besides Ford, they were also uh, the only manufacturer to hire African-American workers. Other innovations included the first dedicated test track built on a factory grounds. Like Ford, Dodge Brothers didn't make annual model updates. Instead, the focus was on mechanical improvements. They also added a wider uh, range of models and commercial vehicles. It proved a recipe for success. Sales soared from just over $11 million for the year ending June 30, 1915 to $161 million for 1920. In the same time, production had gone from 370 vehicles in 1914 to more than 145,000 in 1920. In less than 20 years, John and Harris Dodge had built an empire. Then, in 1919, uh, their fortunes were uh, magnified exponentially when Henry Ford bought their Ford Motor Company shares for $25 million in cash. This uh, and uh, the uh, dividends uh, cashed over the years gave the brothers a mind-boggling $32 million a return on their initial investment of $10,000 in 1903. One can help but uh, wonder what might have been. With the death of John and Harris Dodge, their widows uh, inherited the company. But management founded uh, without the brothers, and in 1925, financial advisors recommended that the Dodge brothers without uh, sell their uh, interests in the company. Three years later, Walter P. Uh, Chrysler uh, purchased Dodge for $170 million in cash and stock options.